All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Elliot Kimmel. I'm a teacher at Central Secondary School in London, Ontario, and this is my presentation on the respiratory system recommended for students in grade 11 biology. In order to use the presentation, you'll need the four diagrams of the respiratory system that are either going to be provided by your teacher or you can download them at the link that I provide in the information section associated with the video. And then you can follow along with the diagrams. So periodically, you'll probably want to pause the video and write the name and the function for each structure. Um, when a structure is present in more than one diagram, as you see as I go through the four, you're going to see that some of the structures are in more than one diagram. And I'm going to use the same letter here to identify the same structure. So you don't have to write the same you know, name and function for each diagram if you've already got it for a particular letter. Um, just add the new ones. In terms of some side notes, um, it might be helpful to add notes to your diagrams as I discuss them. Um, I like to draw things on them periodically. I might circle something or draw an arrow and anything extra that you think is helpful, by all means, feel free to add that to your, to your notes or to your drawings. Um, consider writing the names and functions of the structures on note paper instead of directly on the diagrams. And that way, when you go to study them, you're not going to have the names right there. You know, you can learn what structure A does or structure B, and, and you can sort of memorize them that way. Uh, the diagrams in this presentation are taken from the Internet. I didn't draw them. I make no claims uh, for that. They're used just for educational purposes only. All right, so here we go. This is diagram one, major structures of the respiratory system. As you can see over here, we've got A pointing to a structure here. This represents the nose. And this is for the entry of air, not just oxygen, anything that is in air, also for the release of air, by the way. Inside the nasal cavity, however, and this is the nasal cavity, and that's not labeled in any of the diagrams. So that would be the nasal cavity right there. Inside that area, air is going to be warmed, and it's going to be filtered by cells that have cilia on them, so ciliated epithelium. All right, so the air is coming in. Let's just draw that coming down. And then we have structure B. B is the pharynx, so that's this sort of area here. Uh, it's a common pathway for air and for food, and it's going to lead down into the trachea, or it's going to lead down into the more dorsal uh, tube, which is the esophagus. C is uh, the larynx, or at least the larynx area over here. This is the entryway into the trachea. As the air comes down, it goes down into the trachea right there. All right, so the larynx is the, is the entry point, and uh, this is also the location of the voice box. It's covered by a flap called the epiglottis, and you'll see that later on. And the epiglottis will block this area when you swallow food so that the food goes down the esophagus and not into the trachea. D is the trachea itself. It's also called the windpipe. And this is the trachea right here. So from about there to there, this region here. And it's got these little circles on it. These are the rings of cartilage that reinforce it. So cartilage is a connective tissue. It's it's somewhat flexible, but it's still strong, not as strong as bone, and that keeps the trachea open at all times. Now, um, this is not necessarily in order. If we come down into here, structure E, this is pointing at a couple of alveoli. Singular is alveolus. These are the air sacs, the site of gas exchange, and we'll have a look at those in a little bit. F represents the left lung. Now, it's on the right side of the diagram as you look at it, but it's the left lung of the individual. And that, of course, contains all the internal structures, and it inflates uh, and deflates to pull the air in or push the air out. The bronchioles in G, these are the smallest branches here, or the smallest tubes, so all of these would be could be considered bronchioles and uh, they carry air to the alveoli and from the alveoli. So as oxygen comes in, say the nasal cavity, down the trachea, down through here, and into these bronchioles, they eventually end up at the, the various alveoli where gas exchange occurs. H is the diaphragm. This is a muscle underneath the lungs. The lungs are actually attached to it through some membranes, which um, aren't really part of this discussion, but we could talk about it at some point. Um, it separates the thorax. This is going to be the thorax here, and we'll label that in another diagram. The thorax from the abdomen, and the abdomen will be down here and contain the di various digestive organs. All right. The diaphragm is used in breathing. What happens is it will contract, and while it contracts, it pulls downwards, and that will pull each lung downward, 
increasing the volume of the lungs and therefore decreasing the pressure. And that pulling down, increasing the volume and decreasing the pressure is what pulls air in and then to exhale, the diaphragm will spring back up into its relaxed position and that will compress the lungs. And of course the rib cage is doing something at the same time, but the diaphragm will spring up compressing the lungs and that will uh, decrease the volume, increase the pressure and force the air out. Eye is a rib. There are a number of ribs right here. And something that I forgot to mention that you may want to do because I provided you with these black and white diagrams is you may want to color them. All right, so each rib is here and they assist in breathing because the ribs are connected to the lungs again. You see, you see this line right here? Maybe I'll put this word up. You can add this to your diagram if you like. Uh, this line represents the pleural membrane. There's an outer one and there's an inner one right here. And what happens is the lung is attached to the inner pleural membrane. I know it's a horrible drawing there, but right around here, the lung is attached to the inner pleural membrane and the ribs are attached to the outer pleural membrane. And in between, in this little space right here, there's some fluid, okay? It's very, very small space. So when the rib cage goes up and out during inhalation, right? When it stretches like this, that actually pulls the lungs outwards because of these membranes that are attached. So the rib cage pulling up and out will stretch the lungs outward, increasing their volume, decreasing the pressure. And as well, the diaphragm will pull down and that will lengthen the lungs, again, increasing the volume and decreasing the pressure. And of course, J is just representing the, the right lung of the individual. All right, diagram two. Now, many of these structures have already been discussed and I'll just go through them again. We can see another view of the trachea reinforced by cartilage. So air would be coming down here for inhalation and then splitting off going to the right and the left. And that's where we're gonna bring in the, the bronchi in a while, label K. A again would be the air sacs. Now they're right at the ends of these bronchioles here. So you can't really see them, but there'd be an air sac there and there and there and there or actually a cluster of air sacs, a whole bunch of air sacs, which I can't really draw here. That would be at the end of each of these. All right. F represents the left lung here on this side. The bronchioles are again illustrated. So the air comes down the trachea and then we'll come into these passageways. These are the bronchi, singular is bronchus. We'll label that in a moment. And then splitting up into these small tubes all over the place in the lungs. Uh, like branches of a tree, and those are the bronchioles. We have the diaphragm underneath again, and showing its uh, dome shape in, uh, in its relaxed form. You can also see here a membrane, that's the pleural membrane I mentioned, sort of adhering to the diaphragm here. So when the diaphragm pulls down, it can affect the lung. There is a space in here, and it looks quite large, but that's the pleural cavity with that fluid which helps to couple the lung movement to the movements of the diaphragm and to the movements of the ribs. Eye is a rib again, so a number of ribs. Now, one of the main branches off the trachea. The trachea comes down here and separates into two sort of main branches, which also branch like this. And those, each one of those is called a bronchus. A main branch off the trachea carries air into the lung to the bronchioles. And of course, it would also carry air out of the alveoli and out of the bronchioles up to the trachea if you were exhaling. In between the lungs are muscles. So there will be a muscle right here and here and here, and that's called inter, so between intercostal muscle. And this is the muscle actually used uh, for inhalation. And then when this muscle relaxes, the rib cage will fall. So it's used for breathing. The thorax region I mentioned earlier is indicated by label M. That's all of this area here. So it would include the heart in there, if I could draw a heart, and any other organ that's in the sort of the chest region there. All right. And then the um, abdomen, which is below it in label N, is going to be from the diaphragm down here and mostly the digestive organs down there. Okay. For diagram three, we're moving back up to the head region, and there are a lot of structures in here. There are the sinuses here for people that suffer, suffer from sinusitis and that kind of thing, and there are lots of other structures here that you would you would talk about in medical school, but uh, what we can see here, that's going to be the nasal cavity, right? So uh, that's a good label to add, actually. 
and then um, in here in O we have the pharynx region so all of this kind of area here the pharynx I'm just going to focus on the nasopharynx so if it's coming off the nasal cavity coming down to this sort of collective area that's the nasopharynx and then here we could have the oropharynx because that's the oral cavity nasal cavity connects to nasopharynx oral cavity connects to oropharynx and then you could just call this the you know the pharynx in general or a little bit lower down actually now I mentioned the epiglottis a little while ago but I may not have mentioned the name this is a flap like structure right here that when you swallow the food so the food is in there it's being chewed and then it's swallowed you don't want the food to go down into the trachea instead you want the food to go down through the more dorsal tube which we'll label down here the esophagus so what happens is the epiglottis this flap of tissue here will close will flip close like the lid of a jar or something and it will block the entrance to the trachea um, and the actual hole the actual entrance right there in the middle to go down into the trachea is called the glottis so the epiglottis prevents food hopefully from going down into the trachea the vocal cords are located right here as well so you've got so, some tissue here you got some tissue here and then there's a hole and they're right on right on the sides maybe I'll make them extend over a little bit like that so uh, when the air is forced through the glottis these tissues vibrate like guitar strings all right and that's what causes your voice and you can have the air being forced out you can have the air coming back in uh, and various things tightening of these will modulate the pitch of the sound and we have the esophagus here which is the more dorsal tube behind the behind the trachea which is more ventral this dorsal tube carries food down to the stomach okay now on to alveoli and the site of gas exchange because this is the site of gas exchange it's going to involve blood vessels and the bloodstream so there's a lot going on here so if we look at structure s this is called a pulmonary venule and it actually carries oxygenated blood out of the alveolar region the region here with all these alveoli or air sacs so I am going to draw a little arrow and I suggest you do the same a little arrow pointing in the direction that's carrying blood outwards blood will be coming in through here so we go ahead and put an arrow on there as well and that's going to relate to label W here so what happens is air travels down the trachea into a bronchus and into a bronchiole and near the end of the of the bronchiole the terminal bronchiole as it's sometimes called uh, air is coming down here and then we'll go into the various alveoli and here's going to split and it's going to split into multiple alveoli and see this little hole here that little hole represents where the bronchiole comes into the alveolus and so G is pointing at another bronchiole that would lead to a cluster of alveoli but it's been cut all right but we do see one right here is if we cut it like that and looked in that it would look like G all right so the bronchioles are coming down and they end or terminate in these air sacs so the air sacs are called alveoli a couple of them are illustrated here and these are the sites of gas exchange and really what happens is if I look at this one down here imagine that oxygen has come down through the respiratory system down here and out into there so now you've got oxygen right there now that oxygen needs to go into the bloodstream and what it's going to do is it's going to diffuse across the membrane or wall of the alveolus into the surrounding blood vessels and all of these fiber-like structures or meshwork or spiderweb-like thing okay these are all the pulmonary capillaries which are surrounding the alveolus adhering to it very 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 close and the oxygen then will move from an alveolus like in this case this alveolus and it'll move right into the bloodstream so the very very close and that is gas exchange so T labels a pulmonary capillary uh, the capillaries wrap around the alveoli they receive oxygen from the alveoli and of course carbon dioxide which is a waste gas you know you breathe it out it's traveling in the blood and it goes into the alveolus so let's say from here into here all right and then it goes into the little hole and then the co2 would go out for exhalation so the pulmonary capillaries are important for both of those reasons um, that structure that actually I've been talking about is called an alveolar duct where the bronchiole carries air 
into and out of the alveolus. So that little hole, like the little drain plug, is where the oxygen comes in or where the CO2 goes out. The alveolar wall is very, very thin. It's generally one cell thick to allow for the uh, efficient diffusion of air. And like I said before, W is pointing at a pulmonary arteriole. This is the blood vessel that carries deoxygenated blood into the alveolar region and then wraps around um, forming capillaries. So it really goes arteriole and then around the capillaries, around the alveoli, sorry, we have the capillaries and then carrying blood out that's received the oxygen and given up CO2 is the venule. So we've got a pulmonary venule up here and we've got a pulmonary arteriole here and then we have those very, very small pulmonary capillaries. And that's it for the four diagrams. I've just got a flow chart here of how oxygen enters and CO2 exits. Um, so I'm going to start looking at oxygen. Imagine O2 uh, along with the air, right? But it's got O2 coming in through the nasal cavity, going down the pharynx, whether it's the nasal pharynx, eventually the oral pharynx, down into the trachea, going in through that little hole, the glottis. Um, as the trachea goes down through the chest, then splitting up into the right or left bronchus. The, bronchi, the bronchi eventually splitting into the tiny branches, the smallest ones, bronchioles, which will lead down to an alveolus. And then from the alveolus, the oxygen will diffuse across into a pulmonary capillary. And that then is in the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, which is produced by cellular respiration as a waste product, will travel in the reverse direction from the blood, uh, which is in the pulmonary capillary, then into the alveolus, to the bronchiole, the bronchus, the trachea, the pharynx, and the nasal cavity, all right? So oxygen is needed. You have to breathe because essentially oxygen is needed for cellular respiration. And this is the process that's gonna create ATP or energy for the body. And as it does that, oxygen needs to um, be used in the presence of glucose, which is provided by the digestive system. So there's a link between the two systems, right? Glucose coming from digestion, oxygen from respiration, and then you get cellular respiration as opposed to just respiration. When you talk about the respiratory system, we're not talking cellular respiration. We're talking about, you know, the lungs and such. All right. Carbon dioxide will be made as a product and you've got to get rid of that. All right. So that is a summary of the respiratory system. I hope that helps. See you soon.